back. It sounds like mm-hmm. strategy is not much different. You know, you're still doing the same thing. Until you feel, hey, I've got the most answers right I can. Now I'm going to go back and work on these that are, are stressing me out. Because the worst thing that's going to happen is you get a little easier question and get that right. So both of the exams are adaptive, which means that the difficulty of the questions changes throughout depending on the student performance. But the way the exams handle adaptivity is a little bit different. Um, Mm -hmm. So uh, and this is how it used to be and how it still is um, that the GRE is section adaptive and the GMAT is question adaptive. And just for context, for folks who are listening, section adaptive means that Um, instead of every question, the difficulty changing, we'll take a section overall, look at how many questions a student got right or wrong, and then use that to inform the difficulty of the following section of the same type. So your performance on the first quant section influences your difficulty of the second quant section and same for verbal. Whereas question adaptive, like the GMAT, um, is going to be that difficulty is adjusting on a question by question basis. Um, So the the next question might be a little harder or a little easier, and it kind of shifts throughout until we land right at your, your level or your difficulty, which is where you're still challenged by questions. Um, So I want to talk a little bit about that because this is something that each exam has retained um, Mm -hmm. as they've gone through these changes. Um, um, Jay, I'd love to talk to you about section adaptive because uh, the the fact that this, that the GRE is section adaptive means that students have the opportunity to do the same thing, you know, go, hey, this question's taking me a really long time. Let me come back to it. But they can do that willy nilly, you know, they can make a decision in five seconds, say, I'm not messing with this right now, and then come back to it later in that section, which I think is something that students are more used to from more like paper based exams, or like the sort of things that they take in school. Um, I wanted to talk specifically going a little off script here about how the shorter GRE changes that. Um, I've noticed that like the two different sections are different lengths. You know, the first quant section is a different length than the second quant section and same with verbal. Um, Does that impact or have any like relevance to the section adaptive algorithm or does that impact students' strategy? Sure, good question. Um, You know, just to to clarify what happens is in the first section, you get 15 questions. Uh, once you come out of that section, it's looking at how you performed out of those 15 questions to give you another box of questions. Um, ultimately, it's you know how you perform between those two sections that's going to come out in your score. Um, it, I don't think it changes too much in the strategy that you would go for. I mean, um, anxiety is real. Test anxiety happens. It happens to those of us who who work with the test. Come on. Um, but, uh, you know, I've had, I've had an experience. I remember uh, it was on the test where I could move around and I, on question three, I couldn't remember the, the, uh, how to do area of a triangle, relatively basic concept, but brain fog kicked in. And I was like, I have no idea how to do this. And a few questions later, something tipped me off the, on that formula. And I was able to go back and, and, and do that problem again. Um, you know, same same thing. You can you can mark your questions that that are uh, concerning to you. If you want to skip, if you want to work backwards, you know. And I, I remember in, in both in grad school and undergrad, the classes I knew like physics and other classes I took, I would take my test backwards because I knew the harder questions were later. Not necessarily true on the way the GRE is formatted, but if you get too nervous on a question, move forward. Go ahead and answer the next one. That one's stretching out. Go ahead and move forward until you feel, hey, I've got the most answers right I can. Now I'm going to go back and work on these that are are stressing me out or I didn't remember the area of a triangle or whatever the case may be. Um, Just know that after those 15 questions, that's going to determine the challenge level of the next uh, 12 that you're going to get. And, uh, you know, same, same strategy in each box of those really at the end of the day. Um, also in the, in the GRE, you don't get question. If you skip a question or you answer a question wrong, you don't get negative points. You just don't get additive points. So that's something to keep in mind, uh, is every question you get right is adding to your score and you're never taking away from that score by, uh, by choosing to move on if you have to. Awesome.
Cool. Uh, great answer. And Eric, I want to talk about the GMAT focus. Um, so I understand a lot of the content changes. The content changes make a lot of sense and I appreciate you talking through them. But one of the things that I've kind of struggled with is the fact that the GMAT focus allows for three answer changes. And this is significant because a big part of the GMAT and the way we would say to study for the GMAT and prepare for the GMAT is to get really comfortable with getting questions wrong and moving on for timing purposes. And now it's a little bit different, you know? You can't just skip every question and come back because you can only do three. Right. <laughs> so I, I'd love to talk about why did you choose three specifically? Um, yeah. And how should students handle that? How should they change their strategy? Sure, no, it's a great question. And, and it's it was a feature that was added as a candidate friendly feature, right? Mm. So that because candidates do, they're thinking every single question counts so much when in reality, it's really the questions before kind of impact the questions in the, the future, right? Um, that um, they might get hung up on a particular question because they're, they're it's particularly difficult for them, right? Or they think it's going to take a lot longer. And so all of a sudden now they're burning up a lot of energy and time, you know, anxiety and so forth. Um, uh, and become a little bit more mentally fatigued by it when they should just go ahead and guess and move on, right? Because the worst thing that's going to happen is you get a little easier question, get that right, you're right back up to that same level to, you know, the way you described it. Um, so um, as for as for the, so <laughs> it's just provide for a better testing experience, right? So it helps to reduce the anxiety, helps to reduce the mental fatigue. You know, the idea is if you're moving through and you're kind of pacing along and you're doing fine and you run into a question, you think, hmm, this one's a little bit more difficult than I'm, comfortable with, or I think this is going to take longer, fine, go ahead and guess, then you flag it and you say, okay, if I have time, I'm going to come back to this. So then at the end of the exam, when the adaptive portion of the exam is over, right, you can then go and see, okay, I flagged five or six questions, let's say, I'm going to go back and look at some of those, right? And so then you can spend a little bit more time. If you have time, you have to have time available, right? So if you have a couple of minutes, you can go back, look at those. And if you want to change your answer, you can change your answer. So again, it puts the control back, you know, in the hands of the, the candidate. Um, so yeah, I th it's, but it's also important to just as a, a little detail there. So as you said, you know, up to three questions that you can flag, that's in each section. Mm. So, so I think the, the, the strategy for the candidates will, will change just a little bit, right. In the sense that, you know, before they were guessing and they kind of have to, they know they can't come back. At least now they can, from a strategy standpoint, to again, make sure your pacing is, and you're going to be able to have plenty of time to get through the end of the exam. Just go ahead and calm down, say this one, okay, it's going to take a little longer or whatever. I'm going to flag it, take a guess, and then I'm going to move on. I'll come back to it if I can. So to kind of play that back, it sounds like mm -hmm. strategy is not much different. You know, you're still doing the same thing where if a question is you're struggling with it, it's taking too long, it's throwing off your timing, you still do the same thing. You move on. Yep. But the difference mm -hmm. is you pop a flag and then you get to come back to three of them. That's correct. Yep. Yep. Love that. Much better okay. said than I said it. Thank you. <laughs> that's great. I mean, I've been thinking about this for a few months. Like, how do yeah, I right. explain this to yeah. students? <laughs> um, exactly. So that's, that's excellent.